and welcome to Therapy Explained. My name is Denise Cantor. I'm the therapist of color for people of color and your very own mental health cheerleader. I post videos about all things mental health because I believe that mental health information should be free and accessible to everyone. If you agree and would like to help spread the word, make sure to subscribe and share this video. Every video also comes with its own cheat sheet that summarizes the points made in the video. So to get yours, make sure that you're following me on Instagram at talk therapy. That's T O C therapy, because after all, I am the therapist of color. Today's video is another video in my relationship series going out throughout the whole month of February. I'm sharing tips, coping skills, and interventions that will help you develop safe, healthy, and loving relationships. So if you haven't checked out the other videos yet, make sure that you do. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to communicate with your partner so that they are more open and more likely to listen to your needs in the relationship. I'll go over what the elements are of some of this communication, and then I'll also give you an example of what to do and what not to do. So let's get started. Number one, use I statements. Stick to your experience of the situation, which leads me to the second point. Stick just to the situation. Stick to the facts and talk about what actually happened. This happened and this happened and this happened. Try not to judge it or place your emotion to label what the experience was. For example, if an interaction, during that interaction your partner was hurtful, do not say you are a hurtful, mean person. Instead, this behavior, this situation was hurtful. Next, remember not to generalize. Your partner's behavior in that moment isn't who your partner was. Again, if that interaction was hurtful, mean, or dismissive, your partner isn't that. They don't do that all the time either. Try not to use words like always or never because that's not true. I'm sure there was a point in which your partner was very loving and supportive and heard you out. So try to stay away from words like always or never. Next, have an ask. When you're giving your partner feedback and expressing to them that you have certain needs in their relationship, tell them what they are. Make a request for them moving forward about what you want your interactions with them to look like. Don't just say, be nicer to me, validate me more. What does that look like? What does that actually mean to you so that you can help them a little bit to meet your needs? Remember, our partners can't do that for us unless they know what it is. So let's move on to an example. Let's say for example, that you've asked your partner to complete a task around the house and they didn't. Here's what not to do. You are so hurtful and dismissive and you don't even care about my feelings. You never do anything that I ask you to do. Like, why do you even stay with me? It's like you don't actually love me anymore. I don't even know why I'm in this relationship because you don't even care. If you noticed in that moment, I kept using you a lot. I was deciding what my partner was thinking and feeling, I was generalizing, and I didn't really ask for anything. I also labeled my partner bad, dismissive, hurtful based on this particular interaction. It might already be a pattern, feeling like I constantly ask my partner for something that they're not doing for me. And that's why I feel like it's always. But the truth is that it's not always, and I cannot decide that it's because my partner wants to hurt me or because they don't care for me. So let's try that again. A good way to communicate a need to your partner is this. When I ask you to do something and you don't do it, like for example, yesterday, I asked you to take out the trash and it's still there. It makes me feel like you don't care. Like you don't care about our house and by extension, like you don't care about me. Now I know that you don't mean to hurt me or make me feel this way, but it would be really helpful and I would feel really supported if you could please find time to do the things that I'm asking you to do. In this situation, I stuck to what my experience was. 
I also gave my partner the benefit of the doubt by saying, I understand that this might not be your intention, but this is what is happening for me. This is my experience. I'm not deciding for you what it was, but I am letting you know what it was like for me. And I'm also making an ask. I'm letting them know in the future, I really need you to do what I'm asking you to do because it would make me feel supported. That's important too. Letting our partner know that it isn't just for the sake of giving them things to do, but because it actually means something for us. It's, it's important emotionally to our needs in this relationship that this task be done. And you can apply this to anything, maybe some communication that isn't happening for the two of you to be able to say, when you don't text me back, I feel forgotten about and it hurts my feelings. I know that you don't mean to, but if you're really busy, could you text me and let me know? Even just a smiley face to know you're thinking about me would make me feel better. It's all right to have needs and it's all right for us to ask for them, but our partner cannot meet our needs, remember, unless they know what they are. I know that it's scary to make these asks. I know that it's scary for us to put ourselves out there, but it is beneficial for us, for our relationship, and for our partner to communicate. Lastly, remember that communicating our needs doesn't mean that they're gonna be met in the exact way that we want them to. Compromise in a relationship is important, but compromise is not sacrifice. If you feel like you're having to sacrifice some needs, that's not the same thing as compromising. And it's important for you to assess what's happening in this interaction and how can you both have both of your needs met. For example, if I've asked my partner to throw out the trash, but they're really busy and maybe they work from home and right now they just don't have you know, that energy and motivation to leave the house to take out the trash. Maybe we can talk about another chore that they could do around the house that can be helpful for me and I'll take out the trash. Maybe they can do the dishes or make the bed or clean up around the house. So it is about, okay, if you can't do this for me, is there something else that can make me feel supported and loved and heard that maybe isn't necessarily this behavior? Again, we want to give our partner the benefit of the doubt. They want to make us feel loved and supported. And so it is about working together. By definition, a partnership is teamwork. We have to work together. And you owe that to yourself and to your partner, the opportunity to make this relationship work by being open, honest, and respectful about your needs in a relationship. I know that it's scary, but it is possible. I hope that you give some of these things a try. Let's review before we go. Remember the elements of a healthy communication include using I statements, sticking to your, situ to your situation and your experience of the interaction. Secondly, sticking to the facts about the situation is also important. Do not judge it or decide what your partner's intentions were. Third, try to stay away from words like always or never. These are not true the way it might feel that way to you in the moment. Also remember to make an ask. Let your partner know exactly what it is that you're asking for and that you, what you need in the relationship so that they can actually do that for you. And of course, remember, compromise is not sacrifice. The relationship is teamwork, but it doesn't mean that either one of you have to go without your needs met. That will not make for a healthy, stable, and secure relationship. I will have a video outlining more about communication skills, but we will also be talking about healthy boundaries so that our, our needs are not going unmet either in our relationships. If you give any of these tips a try, please make sure to let me know how it went by commenting below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and your cheat sheet is already available to you on Instagram, so make sure that you check that out. I wish you the very best as always. I believe in you and remember no matter what, I'm always cheering for you.